Marcus Matthews became the lead story on his own show, Hardball, last night when he made this announcement. Well, after a conversation with MSNBC, I decided tonight will be my last Hardball, so let me tell you why. The younger generations out there are ready to take the reins. We see them in politics, in the media, in fighting for their causes. They are improving the workplace. We're talking here about better standards than we grew up with, fair standards. A lot of it has to do with how we talk to each other. Compliments on a woman's appearance that some men, including me, might have once incorrectly thought were okay. We're never okay. Not then and certainly not today. And for making such comments in the past, I'm sorry. Yeah, well. He made a, a recent statement on the show that got him into trouble, and there are also allegations of inappropriate comments, as he said, that he was alluding to in the clip. You know, are you surprised he's leaving? Well, yeah, I like how he says complimenting women. You know, it's this continuous, like to Laura Ingram, he said, uh, you're one of God's gifts to men in this country. Oh, please, Laura Ingram? <laughs> but... <laughs> Number one. Then, but then when he compliments somebody, he also insults somebody. So he said, in 1999, he said to Jennifer Flowers, remember her? Yeah. The Clinton thing? You're a beautiful woman. Everybody watching knows that. Hillary Clinton knows that. How can a woman put up with a relationship between her husband and somebody like you that's a knockout? So he compliments Jennifer and insults Hillary at the same time. Shut up, Chris, all right? You're out now, goodbye. Although I did enjoy his show. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I have to say, I used to watch it at 7 o'clock. He's passionate, and he loves politics, and he loves history. And I enjoyed that about him. But you know what? It's enough with these old guys with their stupid remarks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it, it was interesting to me. First of all, I mean, anyone that saw what happened, it's like he, he made that statement, and then he just kind of disappeared, and, and, and he left. He and his replacement, I think it was Steve Kornacki. Steve Kornacki. Kornacki. He was in tears. He, he was in tears, and he just looked really shaken. You know, I mean, he, he, it, it almost appeared as if Chris didn't tell anyone he was leaving. Kornacki um, will probably get the job. He'll stop crying yeah, soon. Yeah, may, maybe, <laughs> maybe so. But I, I thought what was interesting is that he said, you know, Guys like me, I guess, thought that this was okay. And those comments, I, I don't know. It, we are in a different time now, but the, the notion that it was ever okay to sort of make a woman feel uncomfortable right before going on air, because yeah. apparently he, he would say it not only um, on air, but also right before they wa went on air, I'm not sure. But then I, I started reading about Kathleen Parker, who uh, is, was, uh, is a friend of his, um, wrote this. She said, Chris Matthews is a friend of mine. He and I have flirted unabashedly for 20 years. This is an atrocious end to a noble, happy warrior career. I will continue to be his friend. So there Who's are... Like uh, this is Kathleen Parker. You know, mm -hmm. she... Uh, oh, yeah. She, Washington Post. Uh, yeah. yeah, she won wrote, the yeah, uh, 2010 Pulitzer Prize in commentary. So there are some women that are saying, you know what? He flirted with me, and, and, and it's okay. So it's, I'm, it's, I'm just not sure... It's their looks all the time. It's not just even flirting. Well, he had a... The yeah. Laura Bassett uh, wrote a GQ article that was published on Friday about him, and she yeah. said um, he made inappropriate comments about women's looks, but she said, I'm pretty sure the behavior doesn't rise to the level of illegal sexual harassment. She did say that in her article. I, that it does or it doesn't? It doesn't. It does not. Um, of illegal sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he wasn't making women uncomfortable right. in his comments. Yeah. He's like 75. Uh, he's a lion of cable news. I grew up watching him. I used to love his hardball college tours. He's a really incredible political broadcaster. Yeah. I love him. I, mm -hmm. I, too, watched him. It was one of the few things I could still watch mm -hmm. on MSNBC. And I think um, to reduce his entire career to this segment yesterday, made me really sad yeah. because I thought he deserved a better send-off than that. And I thought I might be raked over the coals for saying that today. That doesn't mean his behavior should be absolved. It doesn't mean he should have not apologized, not, not been held his feet to the fire. But there's a lot of people at NBC that have done a lot of crap, including Andy Lack, who allegedly protected yes. Matt Lauer and killed the Harvey Weinstein story that yep. Ron Farrow was working on. And is still working there? Still working there. Still Are they the as bad as Fox, do you think? Wait, wait um, Mark Halperin put yeah. his, allegedly, his erect penis on a woman's shoulder. And he was fired from, yeah, look it up. They're talking about Brian Williams, who had <laughs> stolen valor, Oy. who lied about ha having service in Iraq with its true story, and he worked at NBC. And it's like, there's a lot of people at NBC that have done a lot of bad, dirty things, and we've talked about it on the show a lot. So if you're talking about, like, and Andy, Andy Lack, Lack is, killing the Harvey is, Weinstein the story. And, and it's in the C-suite. Yes. So it comes from, from the top. And, and that, that's, that's one thing that I was really troubled uh, by, because if you have someone that's in the C-suite, 
uh, getting rid of Chris Matthews at MSNBC, not to say that his behavior is, is appropriate, because it's not, because apparently someone else at behind the scene, one of Matthews' former producers, uh, told The Daily Caller in 2017 that he rated his female guests on a numerical scale and would name a hottest of the week. Yeah. I mean, that's like teenage sure. boy stuff. But, but again, um, but if, if again this is behavior of a 71... Behavior, but I, I, I say this yeah. always mm -hmm. about men of a certain age. Does you know, it okay, they, it, but, you know. Uh, no, it doesn't make it okay, yeah. but you have to understand when you grow up in this idea of somebody saying, oh, your butt looks good, you know, it's like, oh, thanks. You know, it's just, it is what it was. He says, people are doing it differently now, right. and I'm sorry for me doing it. I always say, if you want to see really how people got treated, watch Mad Men. You want to see how women were treated? Watch Mad Men. It tells you. There's a, there's a whole thing that we've and it all wasn't grown too up. too long ago. No, it wasn't too long ago. I remember being treated to those comments yeah. when I first started practicing law, and that was in 1994, 1995. We never heard it so long we ago. We never heard those comments from Walter Cronkite. I'm, not, I'm just saying, there yes. are men who didn't do it. Yes. Many well, of them. Well, there, course, well, of course. There, there may be men who did do it that we never knew about. Well, but the bottom line is, yeah. but the bottom line is, is, yeah. As Chris pointed out, it's no longer acceptable. No, it isn't. That's so right. he's out, and he did the right thing. It's, it's, he said, I messed yeah. it up, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, Mark Halperin has denied any unwanted mistake. physical contact. Of course uh, he has. Right. Well, you know, I never asked for I any. I said so. allegedly. <laughs> By the way, I said right allegedly. I yeah. said allegedly. Yes. You did. And you know, he did. He was but, allegedly accused of that disgusting yes. act. Yeah. It was pretty yes. gross. <laughs> I mean, but, you know. Oh. <laughs>